it's really quite exciting that this is my second visit uh, to Balcombe and yeah and you've come a long way last time I was just standing in the middle of a circle of people and yelling now I've got a microphone <laughs> and that's a symbol of how much this camp has grown and developed and strengthened and how much your message is getting all around the country. People all around the country are hearing your call and I'm confident in the next couple of weeks we're going to see huge numbers of people coming here to support you and that's absolutely great. Well done for keeping it going and building it. And I think one of the things that's most exciting I found the first time I was here and it's still true now is the fact that we have a real mix of people here. When I was here last time, and indeed here this time, I had people saying to me, this is my first ever protest. What do I do? <laughs> and I think that's a lovely question because it shows you we're reaching out, reaching out across communities into this Tory heartland. The local people are concerned, they're getting involved, they're getting political, and that's really great. And it's something we've got to do up and down the country. You know, there are many people here from threatened fracking areas around the country. We've got to get everyone involved in the politics. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as Vanessa said, there is a real problem with party politics in Britain today. And fracking is really a good demonstration of that. We have the Tories. Well, one of, the, uh, <laughs> one of the more unfortunate aspects of my job as Green Party leader is the fact that I somehow find myself sitting opposite Peter Lilly a great deal. And this is the man who runs an Azerbaijani oil company. And he's not a climate change denier, he says. He just doesn't really believe in the science. <laughs> so that's the Tories for you. And then we have the Lib Dems. Now you would have thought, I know there's quite a few people who voted uh, Lib Dem in 2010. Shame on Clegg. Sell out. Who would be absolutely astonished, not just Clegg, but there is also Ed Davey, the Ed energy Davey. secretary. <laughs> and I don't know if it, this hasn't had a lot of publicity, but it's on the record twice and he said it twice, so it wasn't an accident. He said, I'm quoting, I love fracking. Yes. <laughs> This is the Lib Dem Energy Secretary. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, okay, there you are. That, that, that's a seat someone here might want to target next time. Uh, and then we've got Labour, who I've sat beside Caroline Frint at the Green Fabian Conference, and she believes in fracking. Labour is also backing fracking. So, you know, we have a politics that isn't working for us here in Britain. You here are expressing the will of the people. You know that and the surveys show it. People do not want fracking in Britain. There is absolute opposition to fracking in Britain. And what you're doing is you're going to stop it. This camp is going to stop fracking in Britain. <laughs> exactly. Give up now, Quadrilla, someone said from the back, and that's absolutely right. Now, we've, we've got lots of strong messages to give about fracking. I split it into three simple facts. We can't frack because of the local environmental impacts. And there's, that again divides into two. There's the known, absolute certain local environmental impacts. You're talking about each well using a billion gallons of water. A billion gallons of water, when we're often seeing water restrictions in our towns and cities, when we're seeing our farmers not having the irrigation water they need. We have large areas of water stress in Britain. And this is one of those rare cases where I'm agreeing with uh, the water companies in Britain. Not people I'm often agreeing with. I'd like to uh, uh, actually uh, re-nationalise all of them, but that's another story. <laughs> But I do agree with them on the fact that they're saying stop fracking now because we don't know where the water's going to come from. And we don't know where the water's going to come from. So that's one known local environmental impact. And the other one is the lorries. We've already seen it here in Frackham in terms of the damage they've done to the road and what the impact does in small rural communities of huge numbers of lorries, HGVs, coming through. Frackham you just called Balkan Frackham. Frackham. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day for me too. <laughs> Anti-Frackham, sorry, we'll get it right. Um, 
you know, we're talking about thousands of lorry movements for each well. And if you imagine, you know, we did some, Bloomberg actually did some figures on this. If you were to get from fracking wells in Britain, 50% of the North Sea gas supply, you would require between 10 and 20,000 fracking wells in Britain. And just think of all of the lorries, all of the water, all of those certain environmental impacts. And then of course we get to the risks. The risks that we know between 5 and 20% of wells around the world leak. They leak the fracking chemicals. All of them, I think we've got some, uh, some uh, sign behind me that does some of this in terms of the things that you can get coming out of wells. You've got wells leaking. You have methane that's broken up from the shale that contaminates the underground water supplies, the aquifers. And the thing, if you have an oil spill on a river or even in an ocean, you can ultimately clean it up. You contaminate an underground aquifer, it is contaminated forever. You cannot clean up a contaminated aquifer. There is no way to do it. So we've got all of those risks. We've got the radon here, which is something there's got to be a lot more work on to understand because our gas has radon in it. It's a very, very dangerous gas to your health. We've got all of those local environmental risks as well. So that's the local side. Then of course, as many of the signs around here will tell you, you've got the global side. It's a simple fact. If you do the maths, 60 to 80% of our known fossil fuel reserves have to stay in the ground if we are going to avoid catastrophic climate change. Now it's really interesting actually because one of the uh, other interesting things that I do in my, is debate some interesting people, not just Peter Lilly. And this week I had the um, <clears throat> pleasure of debate, debating James Dellingpole oh, <laughs> on the Telegraph podcast. It's quite an experience, I can assure you. Um, and the really funny thing was I kept saying catastrophic climate change at him very loudly and he just kept not talking about it. <laughs> it's really quite interesting when you really confront him because you know the science is all there, the scientists understand we absolutely must slash our carbon emissions now and we must leave large amounts of the fossil fuel that we know we've got in the ground already and that means not looking for new stuff. So that's the global environmental picture. And the third one isn't, as, sac isn't as, as sexy, as important as all of those in some ways, but it really gets to people personally. It gets to people in their pocket. And you know, the people who say, oh, well, I'm not really worried about the environment. And there are some of those who you can't really defend. And there are some people, when we think about people in Britain today, that half a million people today, on this day in Britain, in this world's sixth richest country, Half a million people are depending on food banks yeah. to get enough food to eat, to get through the week to feed their children. So, so I'm not talking about people like him, but I am talking about the people who, if they're dependent on food banks to survive, you can understand why they're thinking more about their weekly bills, they're thinking more about how do I get through the week, survive, pay next week's rent. And some of those people, you do need to explain to them, it's important they understand also that going for George Osborne's dash for gas is the high cost option for our energy future. David Cameron is talking absolute tosh when he's claiming that gas is cheap. British gas will not be cheap. British gas will be the world price for gas because that we have import export facilities. Our gas will not be cheap. It will be the same price as the world price is. And you don't have to believe me about the direction of, um, uh, of future gas prices, natural gas. You can go to the International Energy Agency, those well-known radical greenies. <laughs> the International Energy Agency says that the price of gas is likely to rise by 40% by 2020. So if we get locked into the dash for gas, if we have gas-powered electricity generation, then what we're going to see is a situation where we're going to be paying higher and higher bills. And the fact is, you know, there's all these people who campaign against renewable energy and say, isn't it terrible how much your bill's gone up and it's all due to renewable energy? That is also absolute tosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact is, n nearly all of the rise in, in energy prices we've seen over the past decade is because of the rising price of gas. That's why. 
And I'll give you another figure that it's worth trying to remember if it, because I think it's, it's really telling. If you have a normal dual fill, fill bill in an ordinary household, yeah. you'll be paying 14p a day subsidy to wind power. And you'll be paying 48p a day subsidy for nuclear cleanup. So the wind is costing you 14p a day and cleaning up our old nuclear mess is costing 48p a day. So, you know, when you next time you're told, oh, it's all renewable energy that's making the bills go up, tell people that figure because it's a very nice comparison to use. So, you know, I understand when you're talking to someone who's in that situation where they're really pressured and they say, I can't think about the environment now because my life's too tough and I'm on a dreadful zero hours contract and I'm on the minimum wage, not a living wage and all the things that other people are suffering with. Say, we also, for the future of people in Britain who are struggling to pay the bills, we must not have fracking, we must not have the dash for gas. So I think there's really three powerful arguments in there. The local environment, the global environment and our energy bills. For all of those reasons, we must not have fracking in Britain. Now, you're the vanguard, you're leading the way, and there's going to be lots more people joining you in the next couple of weeks. Um, but, you know, and what I will say to you too is the Green Party, we're here with you all the way. You know, we want an absolute ban on fracking in Britain. We need it now.